person 47. So um, in the sacred space of my heart, um, I don't even get the chance to pull down any of the chakra colors. So we didn't take any of that energy into my body before this process. So that's meaningful and um, that'll come up later. So um, waiting on the bridge, you basically, since you're not going to take any of this energy, this, uh, the chakra energy, basically you're kind of waiting for me in the ether to get you onto the rainbow bridge. And so like I do this work for you, I basically put you on the rainbow bridge and, um, and your energy then begins to, um, step into what looks like a canoe and your back, your face is facing me and your back is towards like the, um, the portal or where like the next phase of the journey will go. And so you're backwards and you're looking at me and you have one row or I don't know, a paddle and you're slowly going and I hear row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. <laughs> merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. And so, and you're going really cautiously like, and I get not trying to make any waves and, um, and you're just cautiously going backwards and I'm starting to get impulses, but it doesn't kind of come clear till the end. So I'll keep going. So um, you then go into the portal and your face starts to get excited. And so I'm from Orange County, California. So grew up next to the Anaheim Disneyland. So we're going to get a lot of these references here. So I see you start to go down into the portal and I know you're going down the um, Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And it's interesting because I can tell you're so excited to start going down these rapids in your boat. But um, anybody who's been on the Pirates of Caribbean in Anaheim knows that the rapids are like such a letdown. <laughs> it's like they build you up and you think you're going to go down this really cool kind of uh, water slide thing in your big boat with all these people. And it's like a diddly little like three humps. And then you're back to like the lazy river floating again. And so you were so excited to go down these rapids and it was like such a letdown. And so um, then you go out of that. And so you're like, I'm going to go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> so you jump on. By the way, I'd love to have coffee because your energy was really hilarious. So um, the you go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. And, and again, it's like you're so expecting this like crazy wild ride. And it's like a kid's ride, right? So you're on and like the car turns a little bit. <laughs> like It's like you know, the total letdown again, like your energy is just like dying to have thrill and excitement. And so I'm flashed back to, um, the very beginning and row, row, row your boat and this energy. And I feel like, um, and so when you first did that, I was trying to understand, I'm like, what's, you know, the row, row, row your boat and this guy trying to paddle with one, you know, paddle and this canoe trying not to disturb anything. And, um, and I got that, that and I had to ask and I'm not sure if this is completely clear but that there's some kind of like family imposed something um like the family thinks one way but you think a different way and so I get it's very like centered around root chakra and your tribe um so tribe is to traditionally like the people who surround you closest so it would be your family and I almost feel like it's the parent figures um but it doesn't have to be but I feel like it's these like parent figures that have expectations or see you as one way or it, I mean it can be anything it could be you know your career like maybe you're emulating their career but you really want to be this wild crazy person or um you know it it could be you know in how you choose to do whatever you do or the people you hang out with or the, you know, I'm not sure. It's just, there's this, this feeling of don't make waves, you know, um, move gently in life. Don't speak up. It could even be these like concepts that you were taught when you were younger, you know, that, that we like, uh, don't speak unless you're spoken to. I get like the row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Um, and then life's but a dream. So I get that this like mantra was stressed to you in some way, like don't make waves, do what you're told, go with the flow and your life is going to be a dream. But you're like, no, I want excitement. I want, you know, I want, I want to go crazy and I want to feel life. And so I get this complete extreme or like pull away from whatever that, 
that family conditioning was. And so um, moving then from there, um, you go through the portal and I get a typical representation of now diving into the root chakra. And so I see you on like a diving board and you do this huge swan dive and we pull all the way down into like this black abyss that's the root chakra, or at least my, my understanding of root chakra. And so you, you land in the boat. And so you're again in your canoe with your one little paddle, you're facing me, you know, not seeing what's coming and you start rowing down this dark tunnel. And so now it's, now I'm really getting, I think this is where they were emphasizing to me that it's family because it's root chakra, which I didn't know in the very beginning. And so, um, I get now that you're really like, there's this conformity and forcing of like doing things a certain way and um and so you're paddling down and as you get to the very end of this tunnel where like traditionally you would get up on the stones and walk out into the land you like dive into the water and you swim down to this almost like hidden place that only you know and um it's down in the water and it's like this cave and you swim into it and you open this door and and you're in this like rock out hard rock like party uh, I don't know, what is it, like mosh pit style, but it's weird because it didn't feel like you, um, and it's almost like I was, again, bouncing between these two extremes, like black and white, um, and so you, like, climb this fire pole up, and so you're climbing now. You didn't even stay there a second. You climb up, and you're climbing all the way up this fire pole, and we're through the rocks now, and so... Um, so since we're moving up and then we come out to like blue sky on the top of a cliff, I get, you know, more higher destiny, um, crown chakra stuff. So we're now at the top and you're at the top of this cliff and you look down and it's like, there's mountains all around. They're those, um, like sandstone looking mountains. And now you're in one of those, um, flying squirrel suits. I think they're called base jumpers or something that put on those like flying squirrel suits and basically like run and jump off cliffs and just like glide in the air. And, um, and so this is what you do. And, um, it was insane cause I was getting your perspective and it was like, I was free falling and it was crazy, but free is exactly the word that came to mind. It's like, you're, you want this freedom and this is like, this is the ultimate goal is this, this feeling of freedom and, and detachment and, um, and just like, uh, it was, it, it was, um, like you were unleashed almost. And, um, and so you're m moving to this tiny little outcropping of a rock. So we're going down now and now you're in almost like in the middle of like the Grand Canyon, but even bigger. And there's like no floor. It's just emptiness around and you're surrounded by these like sandstone, you know, mountains. And there's this one little outcropping that you land on. And from here, there's a, a rickety bridge and you're just like, I don't even care. And you start charging through this bridge. You don't care if anything's going to fall or break you go over the suspension bridge and you're running towards this cliff side and I can see this ledge on the cliff and um this is where I really fall in love with your energy so you're hitting all my points Disneyland and now Lord of the Rings so um then I get the sense you turn into the um the oh what are those um dwarf so you turn into that dwarf king from the hobbit right if you go to i think the third the second movie or the third movie where they go to the um the uh, i don't know what it's called but their kingdom that's in the mountain so basically you pull out this like magic key and you stick it into the side of the mountain and like these huge doors open and you're like the dwarf king right so you're walking in to the side of the mountain and the doors closed behind us. And so now these are your Kashuk records. And so, um, so you walk in and there's all this gold everywhere and you don't even look at it. Like doesn't even engage you. You walk straight up this, um, ramp kind of, and there's a throne at the very top. And so you're walking up and you turn around, you're facing me again and you're sitting atop this treasure and you're not engaged with it. It's like, nothing swaying you. There's no emotion on your face. You're completely detached. And here I start to get, again, 
it's all centered around root chakra and especially because it's gold. Gold is, um, you know, material want and all of that. So I would associate that with root chakra too. And so I don't, you know, here, I don't know if it's the impulse of, you know, um, uh, that these, like you could have, it's almost like you, you have or could have all of this in your life and you still don't know who you are or you still don't have that, um, that connection to some, like a lot of people think money is going to create all their happiness. And so I'm getting the opposite here. Like I'm getting that, like, let's just say you have all the money in the world, but for whatever reason you have this emptiness. And so that's the feeling I get when I'm in here watching you with this. And so that relates right back to me for root chakra. Like there's something, there's a part of you that is just missing. There's something that you just can't put your finger on it. And that's why I'm getting all these extremes in the family from like, you know, you don't make waves rowing your boat, this solitude thing to like, I'm going to base jump, and I'm going to go into a mosh pit to feel who I am and try and, you know, go to the extreme to see, but it's like nothing's really fitting, right? So then um, all the gold disappears. And we're in the middle now of just this like ancient, I don't know, um, ancient castle that's inside these mountains. And, um, and so I call down on your, call down to your higher self and your higher self comes down in this ball of light, almost like a, a ball that you would put a hamster in. And the ball starts to roll around the perimeter of this room and starts digging in this, um, like a track, like a circular track. And I see you start to run behind this energy. And so if your higher self represents all the wisdom and the divine connection that you have, um, it's almost like you're, you're trying hard to understand or follow or get this. Um, but you're running in circles. And so the first word that came to me when I saw that you were carving out the circle in, in your Akashic records was balance. So I don't know if it's looking for balance or like that homeostasis, right? That complete equilibrium um, between all things. Or if it's like this, um, again, because I got big hamster wheel, like if it's that you're kind of in this endless rat race trying to achieve that which is this kind of highest wisdom or highest part of yourself, but you just run in circles and you can't, you just can't achieve it or you don't know how, or it's almost like you're blind and you're just kind of running, following, 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 but never, 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 uh, accomplishing or, um, getting a taste of it type of thing. So, I then call out to your higher self and ask what's for your highest good to know at this moment in time. And your higher self comes out of this wheel and engages me in the center of your records and says, um, basically that you're being called to create your root chakra or your platform. So root chakra can be considered the platform, um, from which we, we grow from. And so they're saying that you need to, um, you need to connect in to what is you. Um, it's like let go of everything that is not you and you need to find that which is completely unique in you. It's like that's there's an it's they're saying that that's enough. Like no more playing what people expect you to be, no more going to the complete opposite to try and feel this or you know experience something that isn't you like find the harmony find what is you and so um they said that you're gonna this is like an initiation for you basically like listening to this this is an if this connects with you of course um that this is like the initiation to start to build yourself from the root up so right there's seven chakras so root to crown so when they're saying this I'm getting so excited for you like to have a call to somebody to put a call like this out to somebody it to me it makes me so excited it's like oh my god what's this person gonna do like I feel like there's such 
huge, big things. And I even asked, I'm like, can I know, you know, can I give a taste of what might be coming from this? And of course I don't get anything, but, um, it's like, there's this desperate call for you to find that unique quality that is a hundred percent you. And they're going to start building you here from the ground up. It's like, all right, we're going to establish you as this person. And this is it. Like, we're going to go and we're going to run with this. So, um, I feel like it's almost like the, um, the divine calling to, to start, to start, uh, living, achieving that, that purpose work. So, um, I'll include the three meditations I have for the root chakra. So if this does resonate with you at all, go ahead and, um, listen to those. And that might um, be a little bit helpful to in the, um, in the process of establishing your base, but, uh, with light and love. <laughs> 